Hey everyone, welcome back to Vernet AI. Today we have some groundbreaking news that's shaking up the world of artificial intelligence. It's not every day that we witness the birth of a new era, but according to Google CEO Sundar Pichai, we are now entering the Gemini era, right? I'm Vernet, and today we are going diving deep into the revolutionary AI model that Google is calling Gemini. Let me show you a mind-blowing video of Gemini. The a squiggly line. What about now? The contour lines are smooth and flowing, with no sharp angles or jagged edges. It looks like a bird to me. Hmm, what if I add this? The bird is swimming in the water. It has a long neck and beak. It is a duck. Yes! A duck is a type of waterfowl in the family Anatidae. Ducks are closely related to geese and swans. The duck appears to be blue. This is not a common color for ducks. However, there are some breeds of blue ducks. These are typically not as common as other duck breeds. It is more common for ducks to be brown, black, or white. Are you sure? What the quack? I was just talking about a blue duck, and now you're holding one. It looks like blue ducks are more common than I thought. Would this float? I'm not sure what material it's made of, but it looks like it might be rubber or plastic. What if I tell you it's making a squeaking sound? Oh, if it's squeaking, it's definitely going to float. Hmm, nice. It is a rubber duck. It is made of a material that is less dense than water. Can you teach me how to say this in a different language? And give me a few options. Ooh, can you explain how to pronounce the Mandarin one? Is it Yatsu? Yatsu is pronounced with a first tone. In Mandarin, there are four tones, which are essential to distinguish the meaning of words. The first tone is a high, level tone. Oh, okay. The duck is in the middle of the ocean. There is no land nearby for the duck to rest or find food. It is unlikely to find ducks here naturally. Okay, based on what you see, come up with a game idea. Oh, and use emojis, please. How about this? We can play a game called Guess the Country. Sure, let's do it. Clue 1. This country is the home of the kangaroo, the koala, and the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, that's easy. Clue 2. This country loves football and has won the most men's World Cups in football history. Hmm. You are trying to get me to find the paper ball under the cup. I accept the challenge. The cup to the left. Nice. I know what you're doing. You're playing rock, paper, scissors. What do you see now? The fingers are spread out to look like the wings of a butterfly. What's this? Big ear and barking mouth. A dog. Sweet. The coin should be under the right hand. Hmm, I don't know. The coin is in the left hand using a sleight of hand technique to make it appear as if the coin has disappeared. Both objects are round and flat. There you go. Both are food. The orange is a healthier choice than the cookie. Citrus can be calming and so can the spin of the fidget toy. They are both examples of popular toys that have been enjoyed by children and adults alike for many years. Give me some ideas for what I could make with this. I see pink and green yarn. How about a dragon fruit? Or how about a green cake with a pink heart? Okay, how about these colors? And maybe show me some animals. Okay, now I see blue and pink yarn. How about a pig with blue ears? Or an octopus? Or a bunny with a pink nose? Ooh, I'll keep those in mind. Which way should the duck go? Going left leads to a duck, which is a friend. Going right leads to a bear, which is a foe. It is better to make friends than foes, so the duck should go left. <laughs> Smart choice. This is a picture of a crab. That's right. Is this the right order? No, the correct order is Sun, Earth, Saturn. Based on their design, which of these would go faster? The car on the right would be faster. It is more aerodynamic. Which looks more fun? The one on the right, because it has a loop. What do you think this person might be saying? How about a woohoo? Oh, I love that. I see you're drawing a guitar. You've added an amp. Now it's an electric guitar. We can make some seriously loud music now. Given that you added drums, how about some 80s hair metal? Alright, I see you've added a palm tree to the drawing. 
change it up with some beachy vibes. What movie are they acting out here? I think they are acting out the famous bullet time scene from The Matrix. Ooh, nice! What do you think might happen next? The cat is going to jump to the wall and stick the landing. It's going to be a perfect 10. Oh, and it's a miss. It looks like it was just a little too far away. But don't worry, the cat is a natural athlete and it will be back up there in no time. Okay, I've got one more for you. Describe the drawing I made. It is a simple line drawing of the constellation Gemini. You did a good job of capturing the beauty of Gemini. Nice, that's it. I think we're done. So Sundar Bajaj recently unveiled Gemini at the IO Developer Conference and now it's ready to make its debut in the public domain. But what exactly is Gemini? Okay, well, it's not just one AI model. It's like a family. Okay, so there's Gemini Nano for Android devices, Gemini Pro for Google AI services and the backbone of BARD and the powerhouse Gemini Ultra designed for data center and enterprise application. So why is Gemini generating so much buzz? Stick around as we explore how Gemini is set to impact Google's product, services and potentially the entire landscape of artificial intelligence. So Google is rolling out Gemini in various ways. BARD is now powered by Gemini Pro and Pixel 8 Pro users are in for a treat with new features thanks to Gemini Nano and hold on tight. Because Gemini Ultra is on the horizon set to arrive next year, developer and enterprise customers can get their hands on Gemini Pro through Google Alternative AI Studio or Vertex AI in Google Cloud starting December 13th. However, there's a catch for now. Gemini is only avail available in English, but more language are on the horizon. Google didn't shy away from the challenge. According to Damis Hassabis, Google DeepMind CEO, Gemini outperformed GPT-4 in a whopping 30 out of 32 benchmarks. That's a bold claim if it actually does that. Okay, but where Gemini truly shines in its ability to understand and interact with video and audio, setting it apart for multi-model approach. Benchmark are just hypes, really. The real test lies in everyday use. Will Gemini live up to the hype? Let's find out. So Gemini basic model start with text in and text out, but it's not stopping there. Powerful models like Gemini Ultra are said to work with images, videos, and audios. Damis envision in future where Gemini become more aware, more accurate, and even start understanding actions and touch a true evolution in AI. But let's not forget, no model is perfect. Gemini, like its predecessors, may have its quirks and biases. However, the more it learns, just like ChatGPT, the more it learns from us, the better it gets at understanding the world around it. Google emphasizes not only Gemini's capability, but also its efficiency. Trained on Google's Tensor processing unit, it's a faster and more cost-effective than its predecessors. And in the pursuit of responsible AI, Google has conducted through internal and external testing to ensure Gemini's safety and reliability. Sundar Pichai and Damis wants to assure users that Google is approaching the path of artificial general intelligence and cautiously but optimistically, Gemini is not just a powerful tool. It's a responsible step forward. So the Gemini era has officially begun whether you are a developer, a tech enthusiast, or just curious about the future of AI, Gemini is a name you will want to remember. Stay tuned for more update and in-depth exploration of Gemini's capability right here on Vernet AI. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on the latest in tech. I'm Vernet, and until next time, keep exploring the future with us. Thank you so much.